Let's look at recording SSB in Sage Payroll. Before you enter SSB, you should check your employee working patterns. The working pattern will directly impact the SSP daily rate calculations. To do this, navigate to Employees. Select the relevant employee and then click Working Pattern. The default working pattern is Monday to Friday. If the employee's working pattern is not Monday to Friday, use a custom working pattern. If the working pattern repeats every two, three or four weeks, select the relevant option. Enter the start date of the working pattern. This is always a Sunday. The days the employee usually works are known as qualifying days. Their usual non-working days are referred to as non-qualifying days. Once the working pattern is entered correctly, click Save. To enter the statutory sick pay from the Summary tab or the Pay Runs tab, click Process Pay Run. Check your pay date is correct, then click Next. Step 2 of your pay run is where you enter any statutory absences. You'll see historical and current absences listed here. Historical absences should remain here and should not be deleted. Deleting historical absences can cause a correction on the employee's pay. To start, select the relevant employee from the list on the left. Then, from the Add Absence drop-down, select Sickness. If the employee has provided you with the relevant evidence of the incapacity to work, choose Yes here. If you choose No, SSP will not be paid to the employee as the required evidence hasn't been received. Employees must provide a fit note if they're off work for more than seven days in a row, including non-working days. For more information about what kind of evidence is acceptable, please visit gov.co.uk. If this sickness relates to a pregnancy-related illness, select this checkbox. Employees about to take maternity leave can claim SSP up to four weeks before the baby due date. If an employee is off sick in the last four weeks before the baby due date, the maternity leave and maternity pay will start. If you are unsure if this applies, please contact the employer helpline for guidance. Next, enter the start date. This is the very first day of sickness. Enter the end date of the sickness. Please note, SSP pays up to and including the pay date. If the sickness is ongoing and you're unsure what date the employee will return, use the pay date as the end date. In subsequent pay runs, you can amend the end date to extend the sick period if required. If the employee has been automatically enrolled, both the employee and the employer must pay a percentage of earnings into the scheme. This includes SSP earnings. To save the period of sickness, click Save. If you have SSP to enter for any other employee, repeat this process. Once you are happy with the absences entered and to move on to the next step of your pay run, click Next. You can see the SSP here. This is calculated automatically on a daily basis using your employee's qualifying days and the current weekly SSP rate. For example, if your employee works Monday to Friday, their daily SSP will be the current weekly rate divided by five. The first three working days of the sickness are known as waiting days and the employee is not paid SSP for these days unless you've paid them SSP within the last eight weeks and the sickness is therefore in a linked period. If required, you can manually enter the statutory sick pay here. However, this means you are not paying the amount automatically calculated by Sage Payroll. If you're not sure what value to enter, we recommend you check with HMRC or your accountant. If there are any dates of sickness after the pay date left to pay, these will be paid in the next pay run automatically. Please note, payroll will not amend your employee payments automatically when you enter an absence. Therefore, please amend these manually. If you want to pay your employee SSP only, set all other payments to zero during the pay run. 
If you have a company arrangement in place to make up your employee's usual salary during their sick leave, reduce their usual pay by the SSP amount. To move on to the next step of your pay run, click Next. SSP will show on the employee's pay slip along with their usual payments and deductions. To view the SSP values on your detailed report, click here. The detailed report will show statutory payments in Section 1, the employee pay slip summary. Statutory payments also appear in Section 5. This is your liability totals. The year-to-date amounts for statutory payments are shown in Section 7. This is the totals for the current tax year only. To complete the pay run and finalize the SSP values, click Complete Pay Run. Although SSP is a statutory payment, it is not reclaimable from HMRC. The P32 report will not show any SSP reclaim. You have now learned how to process statutory sick pay in Sage Payroll.